Are you looking to kill some time and are all out of ideas? Well, from washing clothes to running backwards, these guys have become experts in goofing off. The laundry. The laundry! Here are four unique ways to spend that extra time. Chitwa Wawajitan 抓娃娃的这么一种抓力抓着的抓力要好抓娃娃的话When I'm running backwards, it almost feels like I'm flying because it's such a different visual perspective seeing how far I've gone as opposed to how far I need to go. When you're going backwards, you can really just take a step back, literally, and enjoy what you're doing. Hi, I'm Aaron Yoder. I'm a backwards runner. I have the world record for the fastest mile ran backwards. My fastest backwards smile time is 5 minutes and 54 seconds. I've been running Ford for over 20 years. I started running competitively when I was in elementary school and then ran on scholarship during my early 20s. I ran so much that I sustained a knee injury. My uh, doctor told me to stop running and I really didn't want to stop. So I knew I had to make some sort of change. Retro running or backwards running is where you're literally just running in reverse and there's no impact on my knee. I run backwards everywhere. I run backwards on the treadmill, I run backwards on the track and also out on country roads. Backwards running feels great on my knee. I don't feel anything, which is a reason why I really enjoy it. Stay tall, knee up. There we go. Yeah, good job. Go. When I'm coaching my track team, I occasionally have them run backwards as to enhance and diversify their training workouts. Onward and upward, good job. Way to go, good warm up there. There's more backwards runners out there than one would think. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of people that decide to run in reverse. The last world championships, there were over 20 countries represented and close to 200 athletes. Backwards running has allowed me to see things in a little bit different perspective. In a world where everyone goes forward and I'm going backwards, it's really allowed me to just get back to competing against myself and not be so concerned what other people are doing. It found great gratification in the fact that I'm just competing against my own shadow. Everybody's got their favorite part of the cycle. There are people that love the wash, they love the rinse or the spin or the drain. I'm a spin guy, I love the spin. There it goes. My name is John Charles and I'm a washer collector, uh, enthusiast. 
Laundry day. Mm. The club got started around 1987, I think, and now we have like 3,000 members from all over the world. And we get together for wash-ins. You do laundry till like four in the morning. You do your margaritas and your laundry together. The laundry. The laundry. The laundry. We watch the cycles. You'll see a lot of us just stand there and watch the whole cycle go through. Oh, oh my God. Everywhere. All 3,000 of us come in with a story like, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only person in the world that did this. In the collection, I've got 59 machines and I've got 22 hooked up and running down here in the basement. I have a good representation of everything that was made from 1938 to today. And I take them all apart and I restore them because I want to know how everything works inside the machine. And then the laundry is, for me, it's sort of like the frosting on the cake. These machines represent a lot of ways of doing things in each decade that change, that we no longer do. And I think it's something that should be preserved for other people if we can get them interested. I just can't go to a cocktail party and say, how's your washer doing? They'd look at me like I was crazy. But I can get together with these guys, let my hair down. Uh, it's just so much fun to be able to have a conversation about it, because I know laundry's a chore for everybody else, but for us, it's, it's play. Collecting milk bottles, following brown road signs, spotting village water pumps, taking pictures of tombstones, appreciating roundabouts. These are dull things to do, aren't they? Welcome to the Dull Men's Club. I am Grover Click. I'm assistant vice president of the Dull Men's Club and one of its founders. The Dull Men's Club is a group that get together to celebrate the ordinary. Yeah, it began in the 1980s, a long time ago. We began in, in New York City, and later I moved to London, and the Dull Men's Club followed me and has grown here in England as well. It's got members both in England and America and across the world. The last time we did a roundup, putting all, all things together, it looked like we had about 5,000 members. So here are the people that do things that some people think are dull. Here's Steve. Um, I'm a milk bottle collector. I have some 20,000 milk bottles from not just the UK, but all over the world. Germany, France, South Africa, Hong Kong, Portugal. I've got Iranian bottles. Uh, I don't like milk at all. I just don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. And we have some women that are interested in the Dull Men's Club. Here's Amanda. My quirky hobby is randomly following brown tourist signs. Yep, you heard her right. I get inspired to turn off the road whenever I see one, and I find it very hard not to. I follow brown signs around the UK and indeed the whole world. So I've now been to thousands and thousands. We also have a member that appreciates roundabouts. I'm Kevin and I'm the president of the UK Roundabout Appreciation Society, also known as Lord of the Rings. That's my official title. I have taken thousands of pictures of roundabouts, even when I'm abroad on holiday. I know a lot of people would find my hobby quite dull, but it's bright being dull. It's sexy being dull. And next is a member that is just dying to get into a graveyard. I'm a tomb traveller and I take pictures of famous graves around the globe. Uh, probably over the years four or five hundred uh, on various parts of the world. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee, Elvis Presley, Ludwig van Beethoven, Charlie Chaplin. Uh, well, I don't feel that I'm a dull man, but people have said that, but I prefer to think that I've got a rounded hobby and interest. It takes my mind away from work. And we have Dick, who's spotting village water pumps. And it all came about through accident. Ten years ago, somebody pointed out a tiny little pump by the side of the road, and almost every village we went through, I'd say, there's a pump, and we'd just slam the brakes on and jump out and take a picture of the pump. It's okay to be dull. There are a lot of studies being done now that boredom has got benefits. We're not so interested in the glitz and glam. We're quite happy with simple things in life. 